Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. This is Scott Reich of Crime Talk, and today is your Monday news update. Is Jennifer Dulos gone girl? And the Idaho nurse appears for a status conference. Let's talk about it. Good day, Crime Talk aficionados. This is Scott Reich of Crime Talk, and thank you for watching our channel. If you like it, please subscribe. If you like the video, hit that like button, hit that little bell notification so that you know when new content comes out or that we go live. Our first matter on the docket is that of Jennifer Dulos. Today is the one month anniversary of her disappearance, and no one has seen her since. For those of you who are not familiar with the Jennifer Dulos case, Jennifer Dulos, a mother of five, was going through a separation with her husband, Photos Dulos, who was a who was a contractor developer in New York. Jennifer Dulos was reported missing by her friends, and the police ultimately asked for video surveillance, and they believe that Mr. Dulos was dumping various trash bags around their city. Uh, but that was unclear. The residents had blood at Ms. Dulos's house, and so the police automatically expected foul play. Mr. Frodo's Dulos and his girlfriend, Michelle Traconis, were both arrested, but neither one have been arrested or charged for the murder of Jennifer Dulos. So now, on the one-month anniversary, Mr. Dulos has obtained new counsel, and his new counsel is alleging that Jennifer Dulos, who has a Master's of Fine Art in Writing, and is, I guess, a struggling or one to be a uh, novelist, Mr. Dulos' counsel is representing that he is aware of this book that she may have written, and in the transcript, it sounds very similar to that of Gone Girl, and Mr. Dulos' counsel is suggesting that that is, in fact, what happened. That Miss Jennifer Dulos has basically staged her own disappearance to get Mr. Dulos in trouble. For those of you who are not familiar with Gone Girl, let's recap and see why it's being alleged and, two, whether it is, in fact, applicable. Gone Girl was a 2012 movie adaptation of a book by the same title. The plot of the book is that a couple who, after the recession and downturn, moved back to the husband's hometown in Missouri. The husband, ultimately, who is played by Ben Affleck, becomes lazy, uh, bored, and has an affair. The wife, played by Rosamund Pike, becomes upset and ultimately makes it so their lives disintegrate. The plot states that on the fifth wedding anniversary, writer-teacher Nick Dunn returns home to find his wife Amy is missing. The police conduct a forensic analysis and uncover the remnants of cleaned bloodstains, leading to the conclusion that Amy was murdered. Suspicions arise that Nick is responsible, and his apathetic behavior is interpreted by the media and characteristic of that of a sociopath. Ultimately, Amy is revealed to be alive and well, changed her appearance, and gone into hiding in a distant campground in the Ozarks. She returns home, clearing Nick of all suspicion. That is Gone Girl. Is that what happened in the Dulos case? Well, let's see. Jennifer Dulos' family released a statement late this afternoon, which reads, Trying to tie Jennifer's absence to a book she wrote more than 17 years ago makes no sense. Evidence showing that Jennifer was the victim of a violent attack in her new Canaan home. As of today, she has been missing for a month. This is not a fiction or a movie. This is real life as experienced every single day by Jennifer's five young children, her family, and her friends. We are heartbroken. Jennifer is not here to protect her children. And these false and irresponsible allegations hurt the children now and into the future. So... How does this all play into the allegations of Jennifer Dulos, whether she's missing or whether something bad has fallen upon her? We have talked about this kind of situation. Just like in the Patrick Frazee matter, if there is no body, how can they really go forward with a murder charge? 
Additionally, Mr. Dulos' attorneys have said that he has personally not read the book, but that he is trying to say that the general nature of the book is consistent with Gone Girl. Now, is he doing anything unethical? No. He is simply getting out ahead of this case, ahead of the story, and is trying to really raise reasonable doubt in the eyes of the potential jurors in this particular case. You just need a few of those people to get on that jury that say, hmm, maybe she's not here, unless there is some definitive evidence or the girlfriend comes forward and testifies against Mr. Dulos. This may be a tough case to prove. As clients have said, and what goes around in jails, many defendants believe no face, no case, which means if you don't have somebody to show up to court, they can't point the fingers at you. I'm not saying this is what happened. I'm just saying this is the mentality that a lot of people have out there. Further, does this also sound like maybe the O.J. Simpson case? You know, because he needed to get these matters resolved so that he could go look for the real murderer? Think about it. The next case on the docket is an update on the Patrick Frazee matter. For those of you who don't know, Mr. Frazee is accused in the disappearance of Kelsey Barrett. The key witness against Mr. Frazee is his ex-girlfriend, Crystal Jean Lee Kenny, the 33-year-old nurse from Idaho who allegedly was asked to commit various crimes and claims now that she cleaned up the crime scene. Miss Crystal Lee Kenny's court date today was set for a status conference. The reason why it was set out was that Neither the court nor the district attorney knew exactly what the status of Mr. Frazee's case was going to be at this time, so they set up for a status to see. Obviously, Mr. Frazee's case is set for trial in October, and Miss Kenny will not be sentenced until after his court date. As you may recall, the condition of her plea is that she testified truthfully against Mr. Frazee. She received a very favorable plea disposition, a class six felony here in the state of Colorado, which carries probation, community corrections, which is a halfway house, and then up to three years in the aggravated range for sentencing. This relates to her assistance after the fact of the crimes charged by Mr. Frazee. Police authorities came up empty handed after a month long search of a landfill where they believe some items of evidentiary value would be found. To date, nothing. Also, about two weeks ago, the court granted the prosecution's request to do consumptive testing on what they believe to be a tooth fragment found on Mr. Frazee's ranch to see if it was in fact related to Miss Barreth. As of right now, at least we, the public, don't have that information, but we expect some of that to be forthcoming. That is all that we have for you on the docket today here on Crime Talk. Once again, thank you for subscribing. Please like, please hit that notification so that you can get notification of when we put out content as well as when we go live. Thanks for watching Crime Talk.